Test one, two, three. Are you working? No. Um, do I hear a ringtone? No. Yes. One, two, three. Yes. Thank you. Rainy. I am actually surprised to be going live on my business page, but it wouldn't let me go live on my group page. So anyway, um, hello and happy college signing day. This is Phoenix, the college success professor, and I am celebrating with parents and students May 1st, which is National College Decision Day or College Signing Day, um, as it was um, deemed. Um, I have a shirt and I'm ready to celebrate. I'm ready to share. I'm ready to um, spill some tea. I'm ready to do all the things. So um, I did just go live on my personal page because um, I wanted to let everybody know that if they were interested in joining me, I would be on now. Um, I will definitely be taking time for questions and answers at the end. Um, but before I do, um, that I wanted to talk a little bit first before I spill the tea, share the news, drop some gems. I wanted to make sure that um, we were clear as to why there is a need for um, some education, some information, um, some tips, some resources, all the things that I'm going to share for parents after the decision has been made regarding what college or university your child is going to start in the fall or return to in the fall. Um, because as I mentioned during my talks about this day, um, this talk is not just for parents of soon to be college students. This talk is also for parents of students um, who are in college, maybe they're freshmen or maybe they're sophomores who may be having some challenges, some struggles, um, not just academically, but with regard to, okay, what am I going to do with my major? Why am I here? Why am I doing this? All of those are common questions or, and or concerns that students have that sometimes uh, we as parents aren't necessarily um, able to guide them clearly with or guide them, um, ooh, sorry, my microphone just fell, or guide them um, with specific answers to. So um, I want to increase awareness about uh, college and how college works and the like things that you as a parent should be looking out for before your child goes to college, the things as a parent that you can be working on or the skills that your um, child can be developing before they go off to college that will make the transition a little bit smoother. Um, so I'll be talking about the fact that college is a business um, as you may or may not, you know, probably, but you're not aware of how the fact that it's a business may impact um, the amount of support, the amount of um, resources, the amount of, um, you know, things that your child is able to effectively use and gain um, because it's not necessarily um, going to be given to them. They have to do some advocacy and some maybe problem solving and maybe some big decisions that are going to be impactful for them for the long term. So um, just looking at my notes over here, another issue or challenge that I wanted to, or that made me want to have a talk specifically about parents is um, for better or worse, you know, the talk about student debt is in the news, um, whether they're going to eliminate uh, debt or they're going to do some things to try to, uh, relieve the debt situation because I know, I don't know what the percentage is, but I know there are a lot of parents and adults who have gone to college, either graduated or not graduated, but they're still paying off student loans. So the point is that college is an expensive endeavor uh, for most of us, a costly endeavor, and there is going to be some things that 
are going to make your investment um, pay off in the long runs. And there are going to be some things that are going to maybe cost you more money if you make the wrong decisions or your child makes um, bad choices. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that and give some insight about that. And also, um, I just wanted to pull back the curtain and cr increase awareness. Higher ed as a environment, colleges and universities are sometimes what I would say, not necessarily like sec a secret, but like behind the scenes, you don't know how things work. So you don't know why, you know, this policy is this way or why um, you have to do this, why they can't release information, why they um, are reluctant to share information with you as a parent. So I just wanted to kind of answer some questions if there are questions surrounding that, be a resource if there are concerns about that, and just be... Um, be able to talk to you, um, give you some real talk about what's going on and how you can effectively navigate and help your child to navigate through the ups and downs and the ins and outs of what college is. So if you don't know me, if you have never um, heard me talk or have never heard my podcast, uh, my name is Phoenix. I am the college success professor. Um, I currently work in higher ed. I have worked in higher ed for many years and I am also a first generation college student. That's another one of those terms that we talk about. Like, what does that mean when they say that in college? Um, actually, there are a bunch of different definitions, but for this purpose, first generation, I was the first in my immediate family to go to and graduate from college. Um, there is a lot of talk about, you know, why and how first generation students need support because they may not have the family background or the parents who can support them. However, I am under the um, assertion also that even if you had parents who went to college, um, that was so long ago um, that what happened or what was you know, the, a good way of thinking or a good way of doing things back then is not necessarily right now. There's like, if I'm going to talk about my story and how, um, what I may have done differently. And um, now that I know what I know now. So just because um, whether you're a first generation college student, the first in your family, or you are a continuing generation college student, um, as a parent, there are things that you may know or may not know, regardless of what position you're in. Um, and that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to help you with that. So as I mentioned also, um, because college is a business, um, there, you know, basically the way college works is you pay your tuition um, and, and, and you're hoping to get one of three things or your child is hoping to get one, one of three things. They're hoping to usually get um, the credentials, the degree so that they can get a good job, make more money, have success and what have you in their future. Um, perhaps they're here to um, um, get some social mobility, maybe level up in their family, especially if you're a first generation college student, you're able to get maybe better jobs if you graduate um, than possibly without a degree um, and or you're also hope, hoping to develop yourself, develop as a person, be better, do better. And so as a parent, one of the things, I guess this is the first tip, one of the things that you can do as a parent um, because you are aware of the challenges that they may face in the world, they may face in college, if you are a parent who has been in college before, is to do some initial assessments about who your child is, what their strengths are, and the skills that they need to develop when they go to college. So um, if you've gone through this college decision day, you've done the applications, you've done the um, essays, you've done the financial aid process, there's still house, there's still a bunch of different processes and things that are going to need to happen in order to effectively enroll um, in college in the spring. There's registration, um, there's advising, there's still a bunch of things. So when you are doing your assessment of your child, if you know that during the college application process, you had to do a bunch of pushing, you had to do a bunch of negotiating, you had to do a bunch of reminding, you know that that is maybe an area that your child will need to develop in order to be successful in college. Um, also, another tip is that um, as we are, you know, getting your child ready to transition into college, there should be a lot of communication between you and or your child and the university. There should be a lot, it shouldn't be, you have to figure things out. People should be responsive to your questions and or concerns. You should be able to get in contact with the people that you need to get in contact with. And so I would say that if you are experiencing challenging challenges, getting answers to questions, um, getting who the right person is to get the answers to your questions, getting um, 
information, I would say that that is a red flag because at this point during the recruiting season, because we're still in the recruiting season, this is basically the best that you're going to get from the college or university. So if you are having difficulty in the, those areas that I was just talking about, I would say that that's a red flag. And so if you are having difficulty, then it's likely that your child will also have difficulty if they're having difficulty navigating through the bureaucracy, um, getting the runaround, go to this person, talk to this person, this is not the right office, paperwork being missed, um, information being lost, all of those things. So um, that's just a red flag. Not that you've chosen the wrong school. There's a lot of different bureau bureaucratic issues um, that happen at colleges. It's, you know, it's a business, like I said. Also, um, with the great resignation, um, that has also affected higher ed. So there may be some staffing shortages. There may be some um, people who are new and don't necessarily know what's going on or how things work. So you may be getting some misinformation. So there's a lot of factors behind that. But I know as a parent, you probably, um, you know, are um, looking out for your child, you're looking out for their best interests, but just being aware of, you know, that that is an issue or a challenge that your child may need to face and or navigate when they're in child in college. Also, um, also, sorry, I heard something buzz. Um, also, the other thing that I wanted to talk about uh, with regard to specifically knowing your child. Um, so like I said, I've been in higher ed for a long time and I've had a, you know, hundreds and hundreds of students um, that I've worked with in various capacities as an academic advisor, um, as a coach, as a mentor, um, as a sponsor. And I'll talk about what those things are a little bit later. But one of the things or something that I have come to realize, and as a parent, you probably have also realized this as well, um, different children or different students have different um, ambitions, different motivations, different goals, um, different things that they're looking for when they are going to college. Um, so when I was talking about assessment earlier, I definitely want you as a parent to assess their skills and the skills that they need to build in order to be su successful. And I'll also continue to go into that a little bit more. But you also need to assess their motivation and your motivation, as well as their expectations for what they hope to get out of the college um, experience. And so um, I'm going to refer to my notes here specifically, because like I said, this is something that I've um, come to realize through some research, um, through some years of work and experience with different students, um, and also just to, you know, have a better way of explaining how, how different students have different focus areas when they're going to college. So I've given these, um, let's see, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. I've given six different um, ways that your child can be looking at their college education and what they hope to do and be in college and who they hope to hope to become when they graduate from college. All right, so the first one is, um, and this was not me for sure, um, the child who is interested in being a, um, you know, having an opportunity to, to continue to be able to, you know, increase their different friends, increase, um, basically focused on the social aspect of college, um, meaning that they want to, you know, have the fun part of college. They want to not only, you know, get their degree and, you know, all of that. They also want to have fun while they're there. They want to, you know, especially during this um, specific time that we were on lockdown, maybe some of them didn't have the opportunity, like right now, there's prom season. Uh, many students who were in COVID didn't have a chance to experience their prom, graduation, graduation parties, all the fun things that are involved in college. So the, there are children or students who are, their goal is to, you know, join a sorority, um, join the clubs and organizations, like in, in addition to the academic part of going to class and all that stuff, but they want also to experience the social aspects of college, being out on their own, being able to go out and enjoy their life as an independent young adult. So those are, what are we calling the work hard, play hard. Those are the work hard, play hards. Um, Next group is the in it to win it. I'm calling them the in it to win it. And these are students who either they're first generation college students 
or they are students who um, are just really focused, really driven, really, um, really about their business. They want to make sure that they are um, in, they're having the experiences that they need in college, like the internships, the um, networking, all the things that they need to do so that when they graduate, they'll be right in their career. They'll be able to move up um, you know, and do what they want to do with regard to their career. So those are the in it to win it. Those are like really focused, ambitious, driven students who are in college. They know why they're in college and they want to get all that they can with regard to making sure that they have the right connections, the right internships, the right experiences so that when they graduate, they can just start right off into their career and then eventually reach their, reach their goals. The next group is called the Purpose Seekers. Um, and so these are students who um, may be great academically. Um, I would say this is me. Um, this was me when I was in college. Um, they were, you know, did well in college academically. Um, I mean, excuse me, did well in high school academically and also they're doing well in college. However, either they're not sure what they wanna major in or they are, you know, not, they don't, they haven't really committed to their major in part because they're not really sure what they want to do with that degree. They, um, they want to make an impact in the world. They want to change the world or make the world a better place, but they're not really sure. They want to make sure that when they graduate, that what they're doing has meaning to them, has impact um, on the world. They're trying to make the world a better place and things like that. So I would say that those students are purpose seekers. And then the, um, the next group is called, I'm calling them um, the becoming group. They're becoming um, kind of like the Michelle Obama book, Becoming. So they are trying to figure it out. They're trying to find themselves. They're trying to figure it out. Like why, why are they um, here? Like what is their path? Um, who, they are, who, who they will become in the future? Um, all of those things. So they're becoming and they have a drive or an ambition to become um, something, but they don't know what, what that is quite yet. So very similar to the purpose seekers. All right, the two last groups of students, um, and I would also describe myself as this as well, and this is also a common thing. So a student can fall into multiple categories, but this is just providing a framework for you to see the child that you have. And in order to um, do some assessment on what you have, um, in order to help your child and figure out their path or help them to figure out how you can support them, you need to first assess who you have or what the child that you have or the type that you have. All right, so the next two groups are the dabblers. Um, and the dabblers are students who are really good um, or multi-potentialites. I've posted about this in the past about my um, oldest child. I would say he's a multi-potentialite or dabbler, meaning that they're really good at a bunch of different things. Um, and so it can be difficult um, for them to choose a major because they're um, really good at a bunch of different things and they can't necessarily commit to one thing because, um, because of their being good at many different things, it can be hard for them to commit to something and specifically because they don't want to to let go of this or that they are really interested in something or really good at something, um, but that doesn't have like a long-term impact. Like it can change from week to week or semester to semester. So those would be the, the dabblers. These are students who maybe change their majors a lot or change their interests a lot and aren't able to fully commit to something because they don't want to make a decision, which is a common mindset um, challenge that they have. They don't wanna make the wrong decision. Um, so they don't make a decision, which is also um, not necessarily the best thing ever. And then the last group, I guess I should have uh, given everyone a warning to take out some notebooks because there are different six different categories, but you know your child. Um, so you can kind of figure out and make note of which one of the people that I'm describing your child falls into. All right, the last group is the dreamers. And the dreamers are um, those students who, who are also you know, they want to do big things in their life. They have big goals, big ambitions, but they haven't really done anything to move themselves closer to reaching those big goals and big ambitions. And so um, the dreamers are um, going to be those students who, um, like I said, they may talk a lot about, you know, what they want to do, what they want to be, but they're not they may be, they may have some perfectionist tendencies, which makes them not want to take action. There may be some um, 
knowledge or um, ability issues with regard to them being able to accomplish their big goals and big dreams, um, but they haven't been able to do so. And actually, I think, I'm sorry, I forgot. There's one more group that I actually forgot and let me add it to my notes. Um, these are what we, or what William Damon, who's a researcher out of um, Stanford University, um, he calls the purposeful. Um, so these are students who are clear with regard to what they want to be. Um, and by clear, I mean, not necessarily the student who says they want to be a doctor, but a student who says that they want to be a doctor. And that's just an example, like they know specifically what they want to do. And they don't, you know, just have it as a theoretical, theoretical idea of what they want to do. They know what's involved. They know what's required. They have committed to be able to do the work. They've had some volunteer experiences or some internships experiences or some real world experiences world experiences or mentors who have given them clarity with regard to or help them to gain clarity and or experience that this is something that connects with who they are and what they want to do. So for the student who is, like I said, a doctor, they know what's required to be a doctor. They know, you know, that they have to do um, um, um years of residence, um, years of med school. They may have worked in um, a hospital setting or with a family doctor um, and knowing specifically, like they may specific, even know the specialty that they're really interested in. So these are students who are purposeful, they're driven, they know what they want and they possibly know how to get there. You can also be purposeful um, and not necessarily know how to get to where you want. Like um, if you wanna be a lawyer, um, but you don't know what kind of lawyer you want to be, but you have a specific career in mind and you have some ideas about what the actual career entails, what's required, but you don't, have, don't know how to get from where you are now to where you wanna be. All right, so those are the seven, one, two, three, yes, the seven different types of students that uh, you could have as a parent. And so what do you do now, maybe the question, what do you do now with regard to um, how you can support your child now, um, whether they are about to be a freshman or they are about to be a senior, I mean, a, um, a sophomore or a um, junior even in college, how you how can you can support, support those students? So those different areas or categories that I just mentioned, they can be in any different year uh, because, you know, the developmental process can be different for different people. So maybe they've, um, you know, had some different experiences in high school and or and or college, um, and they are more committed to their major, or they're still in a state of um, dabbling or, you know, trying to find their area of focus, regardless of where your child is, there are definitely different things that you can do to help support them in making those important key decisions and in being successful and getting to their graduation date. So I'm just going to take a sip of water for a second. Also, let me check, make sure everything is still good online. All right, great. All right, and like I said, I will be doing um, questions and answers. Even if you don't catch this um, live, I will go back and check the questions um, and be happy to answer them um, for you all um, in the comments. So definitely, if, you're, if you are enjoying the Where's my little thingy? If you're enjoying um, the information so far, the tips, the information, um, definitely, you know, show some love. If you have a friend or a family member who you think may benefit from this information, then definitely um, invite them to join the group so that they can um, get these bits and pieces of um, tips and information. I will be doing, I think I'll be doing um, something similar to this monthly throughout the summer. Um, because like I said, the amount of, like I can't cover everything in this one session, which is just um, an hour. We're at the halfway point now. Um, but like I said, I want to be a resource. I'll be providing different resources throughout the summer. Um, and like I said, this is a day of celebration. So I wanted to actually also provide some gifts um, for those of you who are you know, able to attend and or show up virtually. Um, but I will save that to the end. Um, so virtual gifts, I will be giving you all. All right. So let me just look at my notes real quick. So just to recap, um, for those of you who may be just joining or who didn't get a chance to, um, be with us at the beginning at 1230, um, we're celebrating college signing day. And this talk is specifically for parents of 
students about to go to college or students who are in college. And my words of wisdom, my advice for helping you to support your child, um, like close maybe gaps um, with regard to the skills that they need to be successful, those skills, um, that knowledge, um, what they need that they don't teach them in high school, that they don't teach them in college, that are going to help them to be successful in college and after graduation. So we talked initially about, you know, how college is a business and how um, the fact that your experience with colleges at this point, if you are just starting, you're that high school parent of a high school senior, um, and the you know, all the different things that need to do, that you need to do and that your child needs to do to actually get to college. Um, because there is this thing at university called um, summer melt. And what summer melt is, and this is like an internal term that is used, is that, you know, one college signing day or shortly after college signing day, you have like all the commitments that you or your university has with regard to how many students are gonna be coming for the upcoming semester. However, once the semester actually begins in August or September, um, that number that you had at college signing day is much less than the number you had when they started. So that the, there are students who melt, students who maybe change their decision, um, go to a different college, students who don't go to college at all for a number of reasons, could be financial, could be personal, could be who knows what. So my point is that when you are in college, we're in that process. Um, you know, the university has its best face on. You know, they want they want you to um, come. They want to um, answer your questions. They want you you know to you know you to pick them. So if you are having challenges with regard to getting the information you need, getting the people on the phone that you need to get on the phone to answer your questions, um, then I would say that that is a red flag, and that it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the degree um, that your child is going to get or the experience that your child is going to have in college. That's just like an indication that maybe, you know, like many other systems of bureauc bureaucracy, there is going to be some challenges that you need to teach your child or you need to be on top of your child with regard to making sure that they're getting the answers um, and getting the information so that, you know, monies aren't lost, so that um, housing isn't lost, so that, you know, all the important things like your room, right at this stage, we're talking about um, from now until you get to college, you're talking about registration, which is picking the classes that you're going to take in, in the, um, in the fall. You're talking about housing, where you're going to live, how you're going to live. Are you going to live with a roommate? Are you going to live independently? Um, there are definite factors that for each individual child are going to be important with regard to that. Um, are, have they ever lived with someone? Do they know how to share? Are they able to communicate? Like all, a, there's a bunch of different factors that needs to be taken in mind with regard to that. Um, there's making sure that the financial aid, the scholarships, all of that. Like if you have transcripts, from um, either AP exam or IB exams, those credits transfer, like there's a bunch of different logistical things that need to happen. And if that is an area of um, development that your child needs, and that those are some things that you can guide your child through um, to help develop those skills. And then also just be aware that that is something that doesn't necessarily go away once they arrive on campus. So you need to have a system of communicating with your child to make sure that those things are being held on top of. There's no magic thing that happens from when your child is a high school student to when your child is a college student that all of a sudden there's some level of maturity and or awareness that clicks onto them. These are skills that are going to have to be developed um, for you with you as a parent. So the um, other thing that I wanted to talk about with regard to colleges and universities um, being a business is that um, in terms of registration, there are also some things that you as a parent want to look out for. And this is probably later in the summer, so maybe I'll go into more detail about this um, in June or July when I do a, another version of this talk. Um, but being aware that when you are going to a college or university, different colleges and universities have different ways of um, hiring faculty, of um, having TAs or teaching assistant, like who is actually teaching your child? Um, are they actual PhDs? Are they experts? Like, are they good teach? Like, there's a bunch of different factors with regard to registration. So like I said, I'll probably save that for another session in and of itself. But your child being aware of their learning needs, um, their learning strengths, their interests, all of those are going to be important um, when 
they are at the point where they need to decide on what classes they're going to take in the fall semester. And that is so important because the first semester academically is going to be like the foundation as far as GPA with regard to your ability to be academically successful in college. So like I said, that is so important that I'm going to like, I'm not going to, you know, just rush through all of that. So I'm going to probably talk about that in a future session. But that is something that's very important. Another thing um, that I wanted to talk about, let me make sure, make sure I'm going all of my notes. Um, okay. Oh, this is another good point with regard to motivation and um, your child's level of motivation, because that can also be tricky. So college signing day is oftentimes a great happy day for many students, but it can also be a challenging day for some students because, um, because of a bunch of different factors, um, whether it be the student didn't get into the college that they wanted to go to, um, or the student did get in and, you know, um, maybe not at this point, but for those sophomores, they, the family figured out that they weren't able to afford that college because of, you know, when you got the aid package back, you know, it wasn't feasible for your family to be able to support um, your child in going to that college. Um, so they may have to go to that second choice or third choice. Um, there may be, um, you know, a bunch of different factors with regard to your child's feelings about starting college in the fall. There may be some um, fear that they're not expressing with regard to, because it's a big, it's a big deal. They're going away from home, uh, many of them for the first time. They may be their first, the first in the family, or there may be some high expectations with regard to what is going to happen they may have their own internal high expectations of what college is going to be like. And, um, you know, can they cut it? Can they, um, the imposter syndrome, can they do it? Um, the major that they've chosen, like there are a bunch of different internal, like um, conflicts that may be going on with your child with regard to their feelings about starting college in the summer. And so all of that will become more and more evident as you get closer to the date. Um, but just being aware of that, um, and I think that one of the other tips that I would offer is to have some conversation about that. Not necessarily now, but you, like I said, we have about four months before um, you actually go or the students actually go off to college. But definitely conversation regarding their expectations with regard to what they want to do, why they want to do, go in their major, why they want to go to college, where they want to go to college, and then also your expectations. because. Oftentimes what I've found is that when we are not clear, um, clearly explicit with regard to what we expect, what we hope, um, what our goals are for our children, um, they can make up their own ideas about what they expect and they may not be in alignment. So having a clear conversations about what you expect as a parent from them academically, um, socially, financially, which is a big thing. Um, like, how are they going to get money? Um, how, like, how much money are you going to get? Like, even beyond the bill and the loans and things like that, like the day-to-day, -day, like paying for books. So there are a bunch of different conversations that need to happen between you and your child um, from now to the point that they actually go off to school. Safety issues uh, for girls and for, and for boys. I did a post in the group uh, regarding you know, um, Title IX issues that sometimes can come up. And if you haven't had that conversation about what to do, or, you know, if they're um, approached by the police, or they're accused of something on campus, like, have those conversations now. So there are a bunch of different things. Um, and like I said, we have, you know, four months, so I'll, I'll go into um, maybe those if there are questions um, in a separate session. But there's a lot of things, communication about expectations, communications about, um, what to do, safety concerns, communication about um, communication about communication. Like another thing that happens sometimes with fa family families is that you send your child off in August and you don't hear from them. Like you don't know what's going on. They're not um, letting you know what's happening. And you know it could be their ideas about what it means to be independent that they're expected to be. 
you know, able to be self-sufficient and able to handle things all on their own. But having that communication early on is going to be important. Also, um, and this may be the last, let me look at the time. This may be um, my last point, but also there is a universal problem, especially um, in my role at the university where I work, it's um, just evident. And it's maybe a deeper issue than, than um, what may be on the surface. Let me just take a sip. And I've heard, I've heard this, um, I forget why I heard this phrase, but I think it's very, very good explanation. So there's a um, challenge with regard to kind of what I'm talking about earlier, being independent versus being interdependent. And let me explain what that means. Um, a lot of young people, a lot of people have this idea. It's a common thing. It's not just college students. It's a common thing, universal challenge that you have to do everything on your own. You have to, you, it's kind of like the American mindset. You have to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You have to do it alone. You have to, you know, it's a very individualistic um, idea. You know, you can't get help if you get help or ask for help, you may be perceived as weak or not being not being capable or not being able to do what have you. And so this is, I think, one of the biggest, one of the biggest challenges um, that we face in higher ed as a professional in higher ed, that students suffer in silence or struggle alone or you know, wait too long to ask for the help that they need. And so I've heard it described as, um, just getting a little bit deeper um, with regard to um, this challenge, having a receiving block, meaning that you have no problem helping others, giving to others, supporting others. But when it comes to you getting that help or getting that support or being able to uh, you know, accept help, um, there's some sort of block in you that you, in your brain, you can't think, you don't think that that is something that is for you. And I kind of mentioned that before, like when I was in, when I was in uh, college, I um, had a, I think it was a, a basic requirement of um, college algebra, I think was the class math class. Um, I think I took that class like two or three times. Like I withdrew from the class. Like I did go to tutoring. I didn't ask for help. Um, I just, I, in my brain, I had to figure it out and solve this problem on my own. And, you know, that, that was a cost, um, for me, um, for example, like not a huge cost. I like, it didn't delay my graduation, but it made like that, that math block for me was big in that it made me not want to major in, um, business because in business you had to take calculus and I couldn't even get through college algebra so why would I you know even try to do that so that was a block for me um, like I said I I think I took it two or three times I'm not sure but when you're in college classes cost so by me withdrawing from that class um, and then taking it again and then possibly taking it again that's like three classes three um, pieces of education that I could have taken, like I could have taken like three other classes. Instead, I spent, you know, three times the amount of money to pass this one basic requirement. So that's just an example of the inability, like how an example of the inability to ask for help can cause deficits. So sometimes we learn that, or we learn that, our children learn that from watching us, like as a parent, um, do you, in these are inadvertent ways that we are, we teach our children, like how to behave, how to think, what to do. Like, are you able to receive help? Are you willing to ask for help? Are they, are you modeling that for them? Cause that is very important. And then uh, in alignment with your expectations um, of them, letting them know of your expectations uh, with regard to them asking for help and them being independent versus independent. Um, I don't have this book with me, but I mentioned um, in the past um, that I often go to my library and I've been focusing on like the parent um, parenting books um, for college. Um, and so there was this one book called, um, it was about, you know, sending your child off to college. It was written a long time ago. So I'm hoping that's the reason why it was named this. It was called, You're on Your Own, But I'll Be There If You Need Me. That was the title. You're on your own, but I'll be there if you need me. So 
I was just, I was just, uh, you know, definitely like, no, this is not the right message to be sending your child. Um, so I asked my child, I didn't, I was like, what do you think about the title of this book? And um, he said, well, I think I would like, if I, if you said that to me, I would think that um, I need to figure things out on my own um, and, you know, don't necessarily call you or ask you for help. And I need to figure it out for my, on my own. But if, you know, things really, really went wrong, then I can call you. And so um, that is possibly an approach that some parents have with regard to college. Um, that is definitely not my approach or, or an approach that I recommend, especially during that first year and or that second year, because there are so many I think the cost is too great because there are so many things that could go wrong. There are so many new things that have to be learned. There are so many um, factors in the transition to college that are weighing against our students that, you know, the idea of, you know, that's the job of college for them to figure it out. And that's, that's how they learn. That's a very costly, costly way to learn in my opinion. So um, especially, like I said, during that first and second year, um, I see it as the role of the parent to help guide them, coach them in how to make those decisions. I've said this before, it's not the job to teach them what to think, but how to think. How do you make these important decisions? How do you um, problem solve? How do you figure out how to get the professor um, to respond to your email? How do you, like, fig like, these are just common problems, and these are challenges and or skills that are going to be important for the life long, for your life, for your life term. So you're teaching them um, how to be an adult, how to navigate the world as a grown up, how to talk to people, how to communicate, how to get um, people on your side, how to get, how to make connect. Like there's so many different things, like I said, that are um, on the table when the child is transitioning from high school status to emerging adulthood, which is uh, another term used in human development and to adulthood. So there is a slow transition process. And that switch, like I said, does not happen when they graduate or when they go off to college. For some kids, yeah, they can really be um, really self-sufficient. Um, many kids not. And like I said, the cost, the stakes are right, way too high for me to just be, you know, sending them off alone, um, trying to figure things out themselves. So that was my um, other point that I wanted to make. So um, let me just check and see. Um, I am going to be wrapping up soon. So if there are any questions, like I said, put them in the chat. If you um, are enjoying um, this, definitely. And actually, um, for some reason, Facebook wouldn't let me go live in my group. So I had to go live on my business page um, and then go live in my group. So if you came, if you're just coming on um, and you want to see the full video um, and you did not register, definitely register for, um, I think the link is probably on my personal page, um, register and I'll send you the full recording. Um, I do have a another um, session, I think, happening in June. Um, I'll probably have slides in that session because it'll be more of a webinar for parents. Um, so if you have topics that you want me to cover then, if you have questions that you want me to cover in the chat, you can answer them in the chat. We'll come back and answer them in the chat. Um, but like I said, one of the biggest things in my opinion, and this is where I'm going to end up, I'm going to wrap up. Um, one of the biggest things that students have, one of the biggest challenges, so I went through all of those groups earlier um, with regard to, you know, the type of child you have, who you have, like getting some clarity on the child you have and where they want to go, where their goals are, where their ambitions are. And so across all groups, I would say, so I, let me see if I can find the list of the different ones. And if you if you came in later and you didn't see the different groups that I described, um, um, like I said, you can get the recording if you register and or um, you can um, go to my business page. College Success Strategy is my business page. Um, so go to College Success Strategy and you can see the video from the beginning. So I'll just give a quick overview. So there were five groups of students. Um, students were more, more interested in the social aspect of college, work hard, play hard, um, 
students who are um, very much focused on getting the experiences, knowledge, and expertise that they need in order to graduate, go straight into their career, make money, be successful. Um, three, the purpose seekers, students who are um, trying to figure out and find themselves um, and how they can make an impact in the world, how they can find a job that's personally meaningful, how they can find a major um, that is, you know, going to be impactful and help them to find a career that's going to be meaningful. Um, the dabblers, those students who are interested in a bunch of different things and can't necessarily maybe commit to one thing and how they're going to be successful in the future and how they can connect their major to their career. Um, the dreamers, uh, people who have like big goals and big ambitions in their life, but don't necessarily have a plan or have taken action to get to that uh, big goal and dream. And then the purposeful um, people who know what they want, how to get there, or people who know what they want, but don't know how to get there. So those are the different categories um, that I've described students um, falling into. And so for all of those groups, I think that it's one of the biggest challenges um, for all of those groups is how to get from where you are now to where you want to be in terms of major and career. So one of the biggest challenges that students have is, you know, did they pick the right major? Um, how that major can connect or transfer to a specific career? Um, and even, um, not if not a specific career, a specific industry, a specific role, a specific job. Like how is how does this work? How does what I'm learning and studying and doing in college get me to what I want to do when I grow up, when I'm an adult, when I'm um, in my career, regardless of what my goals are. If my goals are to make money, if my, if my goals are to be successful, if my goals are to uh, make an impact, whatever those goals are. How do I get from here to there? That's the biggest thing. Um, that students also struggle, often struggle with in college. And that's also an area where parents sometimes struggle with supporting their children uh, with regard to getting from where they are to where they want to be in college, whether they are a first-generation college student or not. Um, if you're a child, and I, I have had uh, conversations with parents before, um, when you can't necessarily relate. Like if you, as a parent, um, always knew that you wanted to be an accountant, and so that's what you went to school for and you're happy in your career as an accountant. You can't relate to your child who doesn't know what they want to be or doesn't, um, is, you know, very much talented, a bunch of different areas and can't make the commitment or the choice of how to make a decision with regard to what they want to be. So um, because of that, uh, one of the things that I included in my book, um, uh, which I wrote in 2020, uh, make your next semester your best semester is a major assessment, a major clarity assessment. And so um, I am offering that as a gift for um, that a download of just that assessment, um, the questionnaire, um, just to see where you fall with regard to what, you know, where you fall with regard to, actually I have it right here, um, what, what category you're going to be in. Um, so make your next semester your best semester. It's a full book um, available on Amazon. I'll put the link in the chat if anybody's interested in it. It's a great gift uh, for college students. But the major assessment um, is one of the things, it's all like full of things because I often do workshop topics on this. Um, just did one actually a couple of weeks ago. Um, workshops for uh, graduating high school seniors. But um, there's a section in this book um, called um, careers, major, careers and Majors, Getting Clear on, on Majors and Careers. Um, and there's an assessment. That's the point. The major assessment, um, exploring major possibilities. Um, it's an assessment and you can either fall into one of three categories based on how where you score in this assessment. Um, and so if you're a major mover, meaning you're clearing your major, you know what you want to do um, with regard to um, your major and you're getting from your major to your career, um, there are some de def definite strategies and things that you can do with regard to being at that level. That's the highest level you can be. Um, major martyr is the second level. So kind of like I said earlier, you may be a dabbler. You're not exactly, you have some idea, but you're not really clear on how to get from where you want to go. Uh, where, where your major is and where you want to go. And then your lowest level is major mayhem. Like you're all over the place. You're not sure. You're, you're just searching and at a, a level of 
unawareness and lack of clarity with regard to your major. So like I said, if um, you have attended and are interested in getting the um, electronic copy of that section, the major clarity assessment, then definitely I will be happy to share those out with you all. Um, you can either DM me or just comment um, in the comment section and I will um, send me your email, obviously, so I can send it out to you. I will send that out and that's my gift uh, for parents. Um, definitely um, you can give it to your child um, and just have, that's a great way to open the discussion with regard to, you know, what are your goals with your degree and things like that. So that's a great thing that I just wanted to offer as a happy college signing day bonus uh, for those of you who decided to take some time out of your busy Sunday and join me and um, have a great talk with me today about, you know, college signing day, what you can be doing, what you can be thinking, ways you can like plan out what you need to cover and or talk to your child about or help them to develop the skills that they will need to be successful when they go off to college. So like I said, I hope that you all are having a great Sunday. I will check. I don't think I saw any questions. Um, so if not, then I think that is all um, that I have for you all today. Like I said, if you have a friend, family member, um, child, <laughs> tag them, um, share this with them, uh, register so you can get the recording and um, give me some love on the screen if this was inf information was helpful. If there were some questions that you had about something I talked about, maybe the different groups um, of students, where they fall and how you can help them, um, let me know. Uh, DM me, comment below. And like I said, I will be doing this, I think, monthly. I think I'm committing to doing this monthly um, for the summer. And um, like I said, the next one will probably be in June probably be a webinar. I like, I like slides. So this was new for me to not have slides. I did have my notes over here, but to not have slides um, when I'm teaching something. Um, it'll probably be more of a teaching format next time in June. So if you're interested in that and being um, notified about that, definitely continue to follow me. If you really want to make sure that you don't miss anything this summer, join my email list. Um, and that is just a matter of you sending me your email, saying you're interested in being on the email list, and I will um, add you to the email list. And I think that's it. So let me just check one more, make sure there's no questions I'm missing. All right. So like I said, happy college signing day. Um, happy Sunday. I hope everyone has a great um, May, beginning of May. And um, like I said, I will see you next month, if not sooner. Um, join the group, join the email list, uh, comment, question, share, um, all the things. All right. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye. I'm not even sure where to stop. Let's see. Okay. There. <laughs>